Hi guys, welcome back to Detailing and the Beast. So after last week's debacle of fitting a new battery to try and get rid of all them errors, we only managed to resolve probably about 50 to 60% of all the engine management codes. Um, and the ones that remain uh, solidly point to an ABS wheel sensor issue on the driver's side front. So today we're gonna to be looking at replacing that knackered ABS sensor with a brand new one. Okay, so inside the wheel well, this here is the connector for the sensor. You can see that there and you'll see it better when we, uh, when we disconnect everything. The sensor cable goes up and round. It comes down, joins with a pin there, so we're going to have to remove that. Comes all the way down and goes in there. And that whole unit, what looks like a boot there, hold on. That whole thing there, let me get some focus on that. This, that nut comes out and this whole thing here, hopefully, will just come out in one piece. So, I've got my new sensor. This is my new sensor here. So that's the finish number there, that's the Ford part number. Now. This is for the driver's side on mine. I believe that the actual passenger side one is just 889 instead for the finish number. Uh, I'll get them checked and put them in the video description below if I can find them. Um, but that's the finish number for this one, just in case you need it and need to order the part. So we get the new connector there. We get a new bracket here where that's held onto. So all that bracket original is going to have to come off. Another one here. And then the actual sensor itself. So to me, it looks like three bolts. One in this, one in this, and one in this. The very first thing you're going to want to do is identify the loom coming from the car and just unplug the old sensor. Just tuck that out the way for now. Easier to work with. And then behind here, there is a bolt that we're gonna to need to remove. And that is an eight mil bolt. And obviously retain the bolt for your new sensor. And that's the first part done. We'll move on to the second one now. Second one's much easier to show you. And that is with the wheel fully out. It's that nut there. Again, eight millimeter. And that should wiggle free. At this point, you can pull this out at the top if you want to. Now you do get a new clip, so don't worry about that. And we are going to need to remove that. I'll get a flat blade screwdriver on that in a bit. But you do get a new clip on your new assembly. And then all that's left to do is to remove the bolt out of the actual sensor itself. So this is all that's left to do. This is your sensor now hanging free. You need to remove this bolt here. And once that's done, this whole thing should just move out of place. Now, just be aware that this has got dirt and mud and muck on it, and it will have on yours as well. So the chances are this is gonna be a little bit seized in. So we'll take the bolt out and we'll have a look, but the chances are we're gonna to have to move it and wiggle it. Just be aware the new sensor is plastic. The housing on it is plastic, as will this one be. Um, so what I'm thinking is not to uh, wiggle it too much. I don't want to break it and leave the sensor in, in the cast itself. So let's get the bolt removed and we'll see where we're at. Again, retain the pin for the future. And as I suspected, it needs a little help.
Okay, so this may happen to you, and if it does, then you're going to have to follow the next part of the video. If not, I'll put a timestamp on this video now as to where you can get to, but if your sensor came out in one piece, lucky you. Unfortunately, mine didn't, and I have heard of this on the forum, um, so we're now in it for the long haul, and we're going to have to get that sensor out. So that is what the original looks like, so it isn't exactly uh, a lot that's in there. Um, but we are going to have to drill that out now. So I will show you in where we are, in there. And you can see the rusty hole at the top. There's obvious water ingress into that. Um, and I think that's probably what's caused the plastic to fail. The sensor was showing a fault and was knackered. So I would suspect that that's the problem. Um, but now we're going to have to be in to drill that out. So... We'll get on with it now. All I'm going to do is start off really, really small. It's a 6 mil drill bit. Um, it's a plastic drill bit that I'm going in with. Um, and I'm just going to remove it and see how much of the plastic I can take out before um, before we re-attempt to, <laughs> to fit this new sensor. So at this point, I decided it was easier to just to take the wheel off. Um, but I'm going to now show you where the sensor goes. That's the sensor hole there. And if I can focus on this, you should be able to see. I don't know if you can actually. Down that hole, you should have movement all the way through. So it should just go straight through. So drilling it out isn't a problem. Um, in fact, what I was left with when drilling it out was something like that. The rest just disappeared into the floor. So what we're gonna do now is fit the new sensor. So if your sensor came out in one piece, look at you, um, and you will rejoin the video now at this point. We're just about to fit the new sensor, which we have here. Just gonna slide that in. Being careful not to put any undue pressure on these cables. It's a firm fit, and once it's in, replace one of your 8mm bolts. Get it finger tight to start with, and then finish it off with your socket. And then we'll move on to the rest. The second piece goes in here. Now you will have a little locating pin here, which is for this. So slide that in, line the hole up. Again, very easy. Finger tight the bolt. Finish it off with your spanner or your socket. Two retaining clips next. One in here, one in here. They both come on the new assembly and they literally just push into place. Very difficult to do one-handed. And the last piece of the puzzle is this bracket here. Again, locating pin and the hole for the bolt. And that just fits into there like that. And then ultimately, we're just left to reconnect our sensor. And tuck our loom nice and tight now i may even put in fact i will i'm going to put a cable tie around that just to keep that a little bit a little bit tighter a little bit neater just to make sure there are no rubbing issues and then we'll go into the car and we'll reset the codes so all that's left to do now is fire it up and have a look and hopefully that abs light will go out absolutely perfect amazing hopefully if i start it up that engine management light will go out as well absolutely perfect so I'm taking that as fixed. Um, the only thing left to do now will be to run it down the road um, and just make sure that that wheel sensor is all good and the fault doesn't return. But there's no need to plug it in with the laptop. There's no need to clear codes off with Forescan. Uh, so I'm going to take that as a job well done. Thank you for watching, guys. If you found this useful and informative, please hit that thumbs up button. Go and check out my previous content. And if you like what you see, hit subscribe. And I'll see you on next week's video. Goodbye.